and three, and two, and away. It's January 19th, 2020. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. Statement muted. I am. Fuck this fucking shit. I'm Damon. <laughs> don't hurt nobody. Oh, I, uh, I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that would <laughs> make me carry. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. Welcome to Comes Out Live, the Bear Podcast with Editor of Length, episode number 540. <laughs> and apparently I'm the only one awake right now. <laughs> well, me and our our, our, our beautiful guest, uh, 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 Edward Angelini Cook. Welcome to the Hi. show. Welcome back. Yay. We love you so I much. I feel like I was just here. Yeah. It's amazing. It's like we keep coming up with topics that like we seem to be appropriate with. It's like your once a month <laughs> visit or something, I think. November, December, and January. Uh, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Please. We're just getting to know each other. Never mind. I'm not even going to go there. I'm just going to leave it at be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A day to month. Something like that. <laughs> it's like the bloom, the blooming of a of a wonderful romance and relationship. Speaking of relationships, <laughs> Segway. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're a little did loopy we, right now. <laughs> Anyways, Gary, Gary, can you explain what, why do we have uh, our, our our lovely and talented guest here? Uh, well, we brought Ed back because uh, he is lovely and talented. And after we finished the previous show, uh, talking about the landscape of relationships, Ed kind of revealed that there was lots more he would be interested in talking about um, being a person who, you know, is pursuing a Ph.D., and does a lot of research uh, and understands resources and things like that. And I was like, great. We can continue and make a little mini series out of this if you want. So here we are. Ding. Mm-hmm. Ding. Yay. So Ding. now I need to make another playlist. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We're good with that. We could just have a playlist called the Ed Files and like how to daddy Santa Daddy episode and 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 the you know episodes <laughs> the, and the, the one that you happen to not be on sure yeah uh-huh. yeah Jake <laughs> yep somebody I mean, I only, had I, to I, go sing their heart out it was it. My fault that we decided to talk about Santas and daddies on the episode that I couldn't be here. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. We needed a guest. And mm-hmm. Ed was perfectly like content with talking about the subject matter. So, I'm sure he was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now since that, I get unsolicited Santa pics that randomly show up in <laughs> messaging apps with no caption no context they're just there and i'm kind of like okay (laughs) people do realize that i'm the one who's been famous for (laughs) having that santa (laughs) fetish right i've been sending them to you too okay point (laughs) see Ah. i didn't know that not that there's any yeah, cheating or anything going on. I'm just in this wondering situation. if maybe I'm missing the sum or something. I don't know. Having a little that, FOMO. For the record, they're not even poor. They're just like, you know, graphic things. But anyways. Anyways, where were we? Mm-hmm. So 
Welcome back, Ed, because we're continuing the landscape of relationships. We're calling this one part two because you thought we should talk about boundaries and rules. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah. I, I see you've got a lot of stuff to talk about, like or at least <laughs> notations <laughs> for us. Yeah, so. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, in school, I, I've always been taught to come prepared. Um, so have some kind of agenda of stuff that you want to talk about. So like, um, I don't know if this has been discussed. So in my, uh, working life, I'm a therapist. So I talk about boundaries and rules a lot. Um, Mm. especially when it comes to all different kinds of relationships. Um, so like what, I thought we would we could talk about are um, the di- like the differences between boundaries and rules, mm-hmm. uh, different kinds of boundaries, and then um, one of the resources I have, which is opening up by uh, Tristan Terramino, talking about like you know if you were to open up your relationship, here's kind of a guide to how to do that. And in that book, um, it has a really cool checklist um to negotiate sexual boundaries um which is one of the the kinds of boundaries that we're going to discuss so i have sent um you all that pdf so um we can kind of go through that and and talk about that Mm -hmm. okay neat so let's start with the differences because uh i i presumed they're not the same but it would be helpful for people to know what the difference is Mm -hmm. between boundaries and rules so like i mean what do you think the the differences are well i'm not going to cheat and use the document because it's all spelled (laughs) out Um, (laughs) boundaries are kind of like borderline like or borders that you ended up creating um which may or may not be related to rules like rules are kind of like things to follow where uh-huh. boundaries, I think, are kind of like spaces within or outside of. Okay. Like cool. a rule would be, like if David and I were mm-hmm. living together, let's say, as like bosom buddies, um, a rule would be keep the kitchen clean, where a boundary would be if my bedroom door is closed, don't bother me. Yeah, absolutely. I hear that. I keep that sock in the door. <laughs> 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 no, I see, you don't even need the sock of the door. The door is just closed. If this, if like this that's, that's... rocking, don't come a don't come a knocking. <laughs> yeah, just don't come a knocking. Because <laughs> I'm I'm really 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 studying for <laughs> my test. Uh-huh. For my, my 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 test on boundaries. Uh, <laughs> 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 Let me just flip these pages. Anyway, no, um, I'm kind of. Huh. The more I think about it, I kind of am somewhat in agreement with Gary. In my mind, I think of the rules as kind of the 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 statements to a I, I don't I want to say a larger boundary. So like that's kind of where my mind is going, but I could be wrong. And I didn't look I will own I did not look at the doc at all. Um, oh, well, I did, but but I'm I'm thinking of that's where my mind is thinking is that it's like the boundary is this this these are rules in relation to that boundary. If that mm-hmm. makes sense, okay. Yeah. What What about you, Jeff? I'm thinking more along the lines of because it it, it it of like I keep kind of like second guessing myself on a few things so i'm just going to say my thought process was it feels more of like rules are where to go while boundaries are how far like we're not oh okay it's Mm -hmm. like we will go this Mm -hmm. far and rules are more of this is the things we do want well it does like i kind of i don't know if this is what you mean jeff but it's kind of like um boundaries are the limits but the rules are how you get there 
yeah, you could probably say that. Okay. Something like that. I mean, and maybe maybe it's not exactly like that. Like, I'm, just, I'm trying to define it and think of it, and I'm like, oh, well, but that's not quite it because that's a thing. And that's <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. I think yeah. mine is more of like the more of the metaphorical, physical, uh, meta way versus... Well, so Something here's else. my real world analogy. Like a boundary uh, is, I am I am accepting of being tied up. A rule is I cannot be tied up in a way that I cannot get myself out. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. I, now, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, I don't know uh, if that meets the definitions or not because I'm trying really hard to look. Yeah, at but you dog. could almost <laughs> say that that. It could. You could also look at it at the other, uh, the other way around and, and redefine that. Is is the rules is you can tie me up. The boundary is how far can you can tie me up. Ding 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 ding. Mmm. Jeff gets the star. Uh oh. Um, Jeff is my star pupil right now. Yay! Yeah, thank you, thank you. he gets he gets top marks. Because <laughs> okay, I, oh, I always think of boundaries as like how how far you can go. It's like where's where or, or almost say limits. Hey, yeah. Um, so like the way that I like to talk about boundaries versus rules, um, and also within rules, I'm gonna put agreements and expectations. So boundaries, um, I like to use I will or I won't. Um, rules, agreements, and expectations are you won't or we won't. Um, or we, you will, or we will, right? So, um, mm -hmm. this is a debated topic within the, you know, overall like relationship, relationship communities. Um, so one way that I, I just saw about a way to talk about boundaries are that boundaries are about us, right. And are like, like what we will and won't allow, um, and mm -hmm. a good way to kind of phrase this is like skin. So skin protects us from bacteria, right? Like from all of the negative stuff from outside, but it also will allow the That's good the stuff to come in. Um, but it also sweats out the bad stuff. Uh, also okay. it's kind of elastic. So with limitations, right? So like th there is some wiggle room with with boundaries um but like if you push a boundary too far you're gonna break the skin and oh. we know that that's not that's not good um and that mm -hmm. if we didn't have any boundaries all of our insides would be on the outside so not a good idea <laughs> so like boundaries are really for about protecting us um and boundaries are more about me right and what what is about me so how that's different from rules, our rules are about you, right? Um, and then also about us. Um, rules aren't always bad. Um, like there's a lot of debate whether rules are something that we shouldn't have within relationships. Um, mm. However, there can be like positive rules, which we'll talk about, but like it's really important that you understand, am I setting this rule because of something about me? because it's something I'm not comfortable with um, because that can come from a place of jealousy and that can usually come from some form of like, I want to put some kind of control over you. Oh, wow. Sorry. That, that, that's like, sorry, just a, a blow up in the head, like a mind, mind blown moment. Just the whole idea of like, cause there are certain, I have met couples in the past. I'm not necessarily talking about me and Jim, but I've met couples in the past where their openness essentially kind of falls along the lines of, um, I don't, not necessarily, not that I don't want to know. It's a, it only goes so far. It's only within certain limits that the other person can control. And it come to find out that the reason they wanted it in those certain limits in regards to their control is because they can control is because they've, you know, they were afraid of losing their partner. 
for one reason or another because they've probably been burned before by an open relationship or something along those lines. Um, I had I knew one couple that they were only open to play together at events, like a kind of, and they would only play together. There was never anything where one could go off and play by themselves. It was always that kind of very strictness to it. And I think the main reason, you know, knowing them later on, um, the only reason it was that way was because one of them was afraid of losing the other. They He wanted everything to kind of be like within his boundaries or his rules so that they would never be apart. Uh-huh. And that's that's yeah. fine. And when we talk about agreements, um, that's perfectly fine. But, like, also I'm hearing a lot of, like, control there and things that are about just one of them, right? Like, mm-hmm. that is, that's what I mean. Yeah. So that's kind of not healthy. <laughs> yeah, um, it wasn't. So- it was yeah. not a healthy relationship. <laughs> I can I can assure you that <laughs> <laughs> they are not. They've not. They've, they've been. They've not been together for a long time. But it was one of those like someone on the outside looking in at them. Like there was a lot of control going on here, and I was not a big fan of it. And it's I I also am also in the believer of if they have agreed on it, like you were talking about agreements. If that's something that they've agreed to, then okay, like, y'all do y'all, and I'll be over here. And there can be situations, not this particular example, obviously, but there can be Mm -hmm. situations where while one person would be comfortable being like, hey, you know what, if we go, we go to an event and we're playing separately, it's fine, you know, be safe, etc. You know, we'll discuss things and such, but the other isn't necessarily comfortable with that. If you discuss it, and uh, the person who does want to be okay with playing separately um, understands the feelings and everything, you know, also kind of sim- uh, sympathize. I'm not sure if it's sympathize or empathize, but um, understands that situation and agrees to that. As long as there's that been that discussion as to why would this boundary be where we only play together, um, then to me that sounds like that's, definitely a, still a little healthy relationship in being as long as they're at a point where both of them are agreeing yeah this is okay but that would be more of a rule in that case right because that would be because this would be something that would be affecting both of them yeah but like would it be really healthy though like i think that you know um the cool thing about rules is you don't have to agree to them mm-hmm you know, like yeah. your partner can come to you and be like, hey, listen, I want to I want us to do this thing. And you could be like, no. <laughs> and when we talk about contracts, like a lot of um, like one of the pros about like rules um, are that like it's kind of like a contract. So, you know, you're you're putting all of this stuff onto the table like, hey, these are the these are the the the, the limits. These are like this is what I would like from this arrangement. Right. Um, but like the other mm-hmm. person can be like, nope, uh, we're going to have to <laughs> negotiate that. Right. Um, and mm-hmm. that uh, also like contracts are always up for negotiation, um, mm-hmm. you know, like and renegotiation. On, so, and renegotiation. So that's why I think it's a really good practice that like on a yearly basis or like even sometimes on like when couples are new in, say, the open or even just a new relationship, like check in um on a regular basis like hey listen this is like these are the these are the boundaries these are the rules these are the agreements how are we feeling about these right like mm-hmm. because what i agree to today i may not be agreeable tomorrow yeah i mean, mm-hmm. I mean in any case in any of those things would still have to be something that's definitely open um to negotiation renegotiation but if in at the time time one person understands the other's feelings and wants to uh abide by them you know Mm -hmm. they it's their concern that they want to make sure that their partner is comfortable so yeah yeah i well i would like to i'm not going to because 
my partner doesn't want to do want me to do that. I'm good with that. And yeah, and, and that acceptable. Well, later on down the line, things may change, and who knows? Even the partner who didn't want to have that, you know, separation, only wanted to play together, could at a later time be like, "Hey, you know what? I really would like to play with this guy. Did you want to play with him? Because I." If not, I would really like to. Is that okay? And again, that's a renegotiation of that term. And that's, as you said, it's always open for it. And just making sure that uh, your partner is always in the circle with all of that uh, and, and not making yeah. anything behind their backs, which that definitely leads to not as healthy of a relationship. And like the, um, I think also something else that's really helpful is making sure that your partner's boundaries are also within your boundaries. If you're going to like make some kind of agreement, right? Like that, if, um, like with that kind of scenario, if, you know, my partner doesn't want me or like only wants us to play, um, like together and not separately, um, like I have to also like check in with myself, like, is that something that that is comfortable within my boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, because the more that like, I don't put it within my boundary list, the more likelihood that I'm gonna be like, well, that's not my boundary, right? Yeah. Like, so that, that like, that's protecting you and also your partner by you like, um, uh, like making that a boundary for yourself. Mm. Okay. All right. Making sure we got and, and then, like, also, you know how I was saying about uh, that rules are kind of good in the kind of, like, early on because they help establish a good foundation of your relationship, uh, like, with connection and intimacy um, or, like, even reestablishing. So, like, sometimes a couple will at some point say they were open um down the road they can be like hey listen you know like this isn't like uh, like there's something going on we're kind of losing our connection i think it's a good idea that maybe we take the openness off the table for right now um so we can build our connection um so like that becomes kind of like a like a reestablished rule does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah So that's another positive way that like a rule can be can be used. Um, and the other way that it's really like helpful is if it's conditional, right? Like rules are like one of the cons with with rules are that um, you've we've all heard the thing like rules are meant to be broken. So like yeah. if rules are like conditional, like hey, like um, if. Um, if we do this, right, like, like Jeff, that's what you said. If you tie me up, these are my limits. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not like, it's not <laughs> controlling, like you can't, you can't tie me up or, or that it's not unilateral. Well, I guess, I mean, that's the thing that I've been thinking about. I don't know. I need some like insight or some clarification because you grouped rules, agreements, and expectations together, but I feel like they're not the same things. Okay. So, like, it it seems to me so far in the the conversation or what you've been describing is that rules can be beneficial, but they're rigid. Um, like that they make uh kind of yes no black white left right like they like they divide things like they make mm -hmm. things um binary in a way sure and like agreements are not that agreements are like a coming together as opposed to being like opposites does that make sense no absolutely and that's kind of thank you for that wonderful segue gary <laughs> okay. So like, <laughs> an, uh, so an agreement is like what I consider similar to the idea of like a relationship contract or a vow. 
right? Like as a couple, as a unit, this is what, like, this is our purpose, right? Like this is what we are going to do. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so that's kind of like, that falls in with like the positive, um, rules, right? Like these are the, like, if you kind of look at it, like a Venn diagram, um, the agreements or the, the, the the pros of rules fall within that like overlap. Okay. Expectations though, um, just don't have them, <laughs> right? Like <laughs> <laughs> because like expectations are resentments waiting to happen, um, mm. and and that's where like the cons of like kind of rules are like unspoken rules. That's where those come in because, like, those can be really controlling. Like, well, I expected you to be home by nine, or I expect you, I expect you not to talk to that guy, or you know. Um, so they can be really rigid and unhealthy, um, and they can also be set up to be broken, right? Like, um, I don't want you to go to this thing fully well knowing that they're going to go and do that thing, right? Like, you're setting the other mm. person up for failure. I've seen that happen mm. numerous times, and I'm just like, dude, that's it's kind of messed up. Bro, uh, I have heard that so many times. It's not even funny. The whole, like, don't go to that party or don't go to that event because, but you know I'm going to, you know that's my thing. Like, you know I'm going to go there. <laughs> not me. Again, I just, I, it's funny because I keep talking about, like, I've, I've seen a lot of relationships, and I think it's one of the reasons why Jim and I, you know, we've been in, in a relationship for almost 16 years. Actually, over 16 years, excuse me. And people have always asked us, so why haven't you, like, gotten married? Why did it take you so long to get, you know, move in together? And then, and the main reason has been both of us have seen a lot of, like, shitty, awful, like, relationships, like, crumble and fall and we knew that if we were going faster than we wanted to, then because people expected us to do certain things, that it would not work the way it has been. We could go at our own pace. And I know people want stuff to happen and some things might happen, but it's going to probably happen on our time frame and our timeline. And having people doing certain things and seeing other couples that have like in truffles and truffles and whatnot do certain things that have essentially led to their demise. That's kind of our, like, we're doing it our own way. We're doing it at our own pace. If you don't like it, you know, that's, that's not our problem. That's yours. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So, so like live with like live within your own agreements. Mhm. Mm so, Ed, here's my here's my challenge question for you then. Yeah, the God. way it's been presented, expectations are a negative thing. So, are there no such thing as positive expectations? Um, I think there are un uh, unreasonable expectations. And like mm -hmm. that we set we set expectations on others that are just like too high and that any time that somebody doesn't meet those expectations, we're going to get hurt. Right. And that's where the resentments start happening. Right. So like mm -hmm. we can, like we can have expectations, but like they, they need to be spoken. Right. Like, um, and they have to be agreed upon. Mm -hmm. But so many times people set expectations that people can't live up to. Right? Like, are they um, set I expect you to. I'm sorry. What? No, are, that you set expectations in your own mind. I was going to say. Like, I expect you to do A, B, and C because we've been together and you should know, you know, that I would yeah, yeah. want that or expect that. And you you didn't do that, so then I get mad or frustrated or upset, and you don't know why, 
because you don't know what I was expecting in my own head because I've mm-hmm. never told you if that makes sense. Yeah, and then um, and this is also that I something that I find that a lot of uh, monogamous couples fall into is they just like they have these unspoken rules or expectations for their partner and then like it, you know like they come into my office and they're just so angry and I'm like why are you angry well he's doing this and, and I'm like yeah but does he know that like you don't like this <laughs> you know um so like when we don't talk or when we don't communicate our like feelings and our our you know our personal boundaries on people you know, we can't expect that other people are going to read our minds, like 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 you said, Damon. So, um, communicate. So, is so basically, super important. Yeah. basically the basically expectations either need to be communicated, but that would almost set them as being classified more as a rule, right? So expectations are just all the unspoken rules which don't necessarily end up being effective because they're unspoken that they're not necessarily communicated with no i i I disagree i think expectations (laughs) could be both healthy and unhealthy but the key piece is about whether or not they're known if they're unknown it's unfair because no one can meet them no one can live up to them no one has any like concept of what they are Exactly. Which is what I think you're kind of talking about, Ed. But like, so I, I just asked because the way it kind of came across to me, it was like, well, expectations are unhealthy, like, period. And I was like, <laughs> I don't fully agree with that. Like, I think expectations can be incredibly healthy. But the the part B of this is that they have to be communicated. No. If they aren't. Right. Yeah. There's there's no there's no possibility can, of, of I have maybe, maybe more perfect. of a defi- definition of defining a rule. I, I have a perfect example because of what I do as of my work. Every year we get evaluated on our performance reviews and everything is kind of set in these three separate boxes. And it is like failed to meet expectations, met expectations, and exceeded expectations, right? Mm-hmm. But you don't know where to put things unless you know what the expectations are. So with everything, every goal that we have for work, we have a set of expectations that are defined, well, not clearly, but, you know, clearly enough to where you can say, okay, hey, I didn't meet that expectation, I met that expectation, or I exceeded that expectation. So it's known. Everything is known. The 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 scale, quote unquote, is known. So everything about it is known. There is no unspoken are unwritten expectations that you would never know about unless it's something that came up between yearly evaluations. So again, mm-hmm. the whole idea of like making sure that you're communicating and talking with someone, your partner, um, are important because if you like we're like Gary is saying, if I don't know that you expect me to take the trash out every night, then I don't know that you expect me to do that. And uh, granted, I'm putting a very like base thing on this. Um, so when you get mad that the trash doesn't get taken out, then I don't, I don't, I won't understand why you're mad. I didn't meet right. that expectation because I didn't know it existed. Right. I mean, I feel in a way like the pros and cons that we have here about rules are the same for expectations. Yeah, I would say that. Okay. Like, expectations can be controlling. They can be rigid and unhealthy. They can also, you know, be unspoken, which is the key piece, I think, that as to why they come across that way. Um, so if you, don't, if you don't communicate them, you don't explain them, then no one's ever going to know them or understand them. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I think, like, something else to, like, throw out there is a lot of our expectations are based on our own v- values and morals and beliefs. And that um, sometimes it's not, like, sometimes when expectations go wrong is when our expectations 
of others is just so high that like when they don't live up to them, like like kind of like we don't allow people to um uh, I don't know the best way to say this, but like um we're setting the bar too high for people, right? Like so like our boundaries are about us, but like recognizing that other people may have different boundaries. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's fair to say that expectations can be pretty wonky, but so can boundaries. Like, you know, um, while boundaries are personal from the sounds of it, I think understanding boundaries is where they where they f- fall sideways for other people because they are not you. They cannot comprehend why for you this is a thing. Um, and I and I don't know why this just popped in my head. Um, I think it's part of the reason that like accepting others is difficult because we aren't able to picture ourselves as them. We picture ourselves, we picture, if we were them, we picture ourselves instead of picturing actually them. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. You know, we, because we don't know what it's like to be anybody else. Damon only knows what it's like to be Damon. To my knowledge, he has not had any out of body experiences and been anybody else. He has not, like, you know, had any type of cognitive situation or uh, in terms of, you know, like different uh, personalities or experiences. Um, David, you've never said anything, so I'm taking a leap here that you've, like, not had past <laughs> impressions. Um, so, I mean, I, so I, that's what I think of, like, you know, that. Um, that's where the the disconnect can be for people like in and making a connection with another is not being able to understand them because they're like you, it's not it's not me and I can't come to that point and, that, and I used that to feel that way a lot about hard. well I used to feel that way about cake like long 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 time ago I was kind of like these people are all there's a little something going on like why on earth would you agree to be beaten and, you know, put down and all these other kind of things? Because I thought it was very negative. Like, I could not comprehend, like, that there's something beneficial out of it, let alone that um, it would be desired or sought out. Um, so, and I think that's really uh, the key difference. Like, one of the things you were putting into this that I'm looking at is, like, boundaries versus the other items is whether it's personal or not personal. Like if you're making a presumption upon the collective as opposed to the individual. And now I'm getting in my head the idea of like society versus the individual, right? Like, you know, we have a lot of society expectations, societal expectations and societal rules. And that when, when our mm-hmm. boundaries don't live up to those rules, agreements and expectations, we get, that's where shame comes in. And mm-hmm. Um, so, and that's where the, the, especially in relationship context, like if I don't like say like within like values, like if monogamy isn't one of my values, um, and like it is my partner, um, then like, we're definitely going to have an issue here. Right. Like, but like, I don't ascribe to societal expectations right or societal rules about relationship structures you know what i mean Mm -hmm. yeah so um that is i mean that's 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 a huge that's a huge issue especially when um when i talk to a lot of couples you know like who are negotiating kink and by the way when you said kink before i thought you said cake and I was really confused. <laughs> so, <laughs> why? You, you were Ed, the only one Ed, I heard Ed, Kate, and I'm like, Ed, huh? Ed, come on. It's not that difficult. It's chocolate versus vanilla. I mean, it's, it's what about awful. strawberry. Oh, my God. It's obviously binary. <laughs> Oh what, my God! Was, no, 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 no. What is this fruity stuff? What is this? No, 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 no. Like, don't muddy the waters. Don't like add in all this other fru fru shit. Like, it's either oh. one. <laughs> that was really crummy. I'm being silly, everybody. Before okay, I, I will admit I also heard cake, and I was like, "Why are you talking about cake, Gary? What the fuck?" <laughs> I think you said cake when you meant cake. It's okay. And then you it's talking okay. About cake, so. Oh yeah. So yeah. Wait, yeah. I got it after a minute. 
I mean, you you need to beat the batter in order to make the cake anyway. So and to, answer, sure do. And to answer Owen's question in the live chat, um, how much cake should we have? As much as you want, Owen. It's all about you and your boundaries. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. my goodness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Take the cake. Taste that cake. Anyway, cake. move right along. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Does that be on the Let's back of a shirt? <laughs> I don't. I think Tasty Cake, the company, might disapprove. Well, rate that. that. Rate that down, Gary. Maybe that. No, no, another... no. It doesn't have to be Tasty Cakes. It's just you know. That, that may be cake. another another uh, idea for a shirt, Gary. So write that down. Eat that oh, batter. Jesus. Eat the batter. Well, <laughs> honey, batter. gay men are always eating the batter. Mm. Beating, beating. Beat that batter. Anyway. Beat- I, I really want a want a a t shirt that says, says uh, I I don't have a, a six pack I have a keg Would you like to drink from a tap? Oh oh! <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. But that's another matter altogether. Anyways, where were we? <laughs> uh, Ed, let's talk about the different types of personal boundaries. Sure. So like, uh, so like I was saying, so obviously if, if boundaries are about us, there's going to be different kinds of boundaries and these are all personal. These are all about us, right? So like typically when I talk about boundaries, I talk about six different kinds. We have emotional boundaries, physical boundaries, time boundaries, sexual boundaries, intellectual boundaries, and material boundaries. Um, so with um, emotional boundaries. And like the other thing with these is we all have them. Um, and But we just may not know that we have them or even know why we have them. Because sometimes they are informed by previous experiences. Sometimes they're informed by like trauma. Um, and so sometimes, you know, our personal boundaries are uh, limiting. Sometimes they're they're maladaptive, um, and that's why it's important that we ask ourselves why do I like why do I why do I have this? Um, so like emotional boundaries. Um, so this is like an example that I usually talk to clients about is don't go to the don't go to the hardware store for bread. Has anybody ever heard of that? No, no, no. It's really cool. Um, so have you, is there anybody in your life that you go to talk to and like, they just suck, um, when you are talking to them about your problems? Hmm. And you get really Um, frustrated with them? And you get really what? Like frustrated. Frustrated. Um... Maybe. Ooh, maybe. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, So my husband is not the best when I want emotional support. Um, He has his limitations when it comes to that. So if I'm having a really hard day at work and I come home and, like, I'm unloading on him and I get a, like, I'm sorry, response, that's going to, like, really upset me. Um, So I know... That, like, if I need to, like, vent or I I go to somebody else because Mm -hmm. that's where I'm going to get the support that I need. Ah. So, like. And you shouldn't expect your husband to provide that need because because just because he's your husband. Exactly. Right. So, like, if if I need bread, I know not to go or if I need a hammer or wait. Hold on. To use this analogy, <laughs> <laughs> if I if need bread, I want to I get not hammered, my I don't go to the bakery. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I go to the they, they may have some this. yeast that might help, but probably. Whoa, oh my god, yeast. Jeffrey! Uh, no. Nope. If no. you're gonna brew something no. to then Blech. drink. Oh my god. I don't know. No, no. Okay, so the example is what you're what you're saying. Let me see if I understand. This is like go to a good resource, not to 
like the one that cannot meet what your demand or, or fill fill your need, I guess is a better way to, to phrase that. Not demand. Right. Um Okay. Yeah, I'd never heard of that before. I was like, that's 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 a Maryland, Delaware something thing. <laughs> or such a thing. Like obviously you don't go to the hardware store for bread. Just saying. Um uh-huh. and that's why I guess I paused you know, when you said about like, is there anybody that you go to like to vent that isn't, you know, that frustrates you? And I'm like, mm, no. But then again, I'm a forty six year old male, so I've already figured that out in my life. Like I don't go I don't vent to people who can't handle it or provide some feedback <laughs> or like benefit me in some way because or, or pr- provide helpful feedback. Right. Been, because been I'm, now so, I'm now, I'm now starting to think of example of my parents because all they'll do is just come at me and criticize me and say what I did wrong, wrong, wrong. Exactly. Or at least that's my expectations of them, which may be totally wrong, but you know, I come to him with certain problems. Yeah. Well, no, and, and I think that's that's incredibly insightful and disturbing. I just realized. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because I was just thinking. Uh, I was doing multiple thinkings at the same time, which is always dangerous. But <laughs> what it comes down to is the people that we've relied on for a significant portion of our lives to be our emotional like vent or our emotional outlet may actually be not that good at it at all just because they've been so for such a large chunk of time does not mean that they are that way and i'm thinking of parents i'm not going to speak for everybody's parents out there but i know that my parents were definitively not that like they were good (laughs) to talk about some things and to kind of bounce ideas off of, but it was few and far between that I felt like I walked away and was like, I really got some ben- something beneficial out of that. Um, yeah, <laughs> like like and 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 there's a thing about this, and this is a show topic for another time, another day. Like I've told a lot of younger individuals who are especially in their 20s and going into their 30s that if you have a bond and relationship with your parents, be prepared for, in my experience, it's been, there comes a time where that flips and you are no longer the child to the parent, but then you become the parent to the child because Mm -hmm. something happens and your life arc, like your journey goes differently. And you start questioning why your parents do the things that they do. It's not that they're regressing technically, but you start wondering like, I used to look to you to be like, like my guidance, like my, maybe my moral compass, like you would know how to do things right. And now you're making questionable decisions, like, or whatever. And it, it becomes really challenging because then you're like, what's going on here? Like, since when did I become the adult? You've always <laughs> been the adult. You're still the adult. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was, uh, that was a thing for me with both of my parents. I mean, even though they had divorced, you know, quite some time ago, I find that there are times that I would be like, I don't, I, what? Yeah. Like, I thought, like, that, like, and then that's, a, I think that's a whole internal struggle about the, the structure that we create and we put them on unintentional pedestals because they are our parents, like, they raise us. And so by being our caretakers, we look up to them because they are older. They're, there's this whole, like, kind of structure. And then there comes a point where it's like, yeah, but I don't really need you to do that anymore. Like, I'm being my own individual. I'm being my own, you know, spirit of doing Mm -hmm. things. And therefore, uh, you start kind of wondering and and looking at other stuff. Anyways, I totally went off on a rant and a sideways, like, thing. (laughs) Apologies. I was just processing some stuff, apparently. you did. (laughs) (laughs) So, moving on. Well, and and if if anything, it is one of the relationships that, that you have. I mean, it's not, like partner relationship uh, um, uh, couple relationship but it's still a relationship where a bunch of these things will will still affect uh you for for that and maybe not in the exact same way obviously but um some things to think of oh tissue sorry i'm reading the chat (laughs) <laughs> all right so anyway well shall we move on 
next so uh then we like then we have physical um uh, personal boundaries so those are like you know those are things that like we set for ourselves like when we know ourselves like our like how we like to handle ourselves how we like to carry ourselves so like the best examples that i know about this are like allergies right like we know how to communicate to others that um hey i i can't have shellfish or i'm lactose intolerant or you know like these things things that are going to affect us physically and the other one that everybody kind of knows is about our own personal bubble um you know, like I am a, I'm a hugger, right? Like I am very touchy feely. I'm, I'm very tactile. So like I have no problem giving people hugs. I will usually ask for consent before giving said hug. However, you know, that's fine. But there are other people who aren't right. So like they're more of a handshake person or just not, don't, don't touch me. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, right. Uh, and then like, you know, we have like spatial boundaries. Um, and I had this thought of like, you know, like, don't come in my room, mom. Um, that, <laughs> like we have when we were kids. Um, but like, but yeah, like those are like physical boundaries. Um, and then like we have, we have time boundaries. So like one of my friends, Gabe, um, he has a, a great time boundary that he doesn't make plans with somebody within 24 hour spans, right? Like if you call him same day and are like, Hey, do you want to go to the movies? He's going to be like, Nope. Um, I can go with, I can go to a movie Mm -hmm. tomorrow, but my day's already planned today. Not today. Oh my God. Uh, and then also like today, Satan. (laughs) And then the idea that, like, you know, um, I have specific office hours. So, like, you know, like, these are my time boundaries. Um, And that, like, uh, you know, I work with a lot of recovering addicts. So, like, it's really important. Like, how are you spending your time, right? Like, I want you to be intentional Mm -hmm. with every single minute of your day. Like, if you have time for boredom, get it out. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That actually makes a lot of sense. And then That's to actually, like, actually a twenty four hour rule is a really good one to have too. I know. <laughs> Sorry. See the wheels my mind David going. Is just been, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, He's been busy that processing really that ever since you explained it, Ed. <laughs> I have that I, I <laughs> mine is is varying. Sometimes sometimes I'm very spontaneous, sometimes I'm very uh let's plain things out. I mean, I'm rather spontaneous, but I also know that I could use some discipline with that. So maybe I do need to institute this 24 hour rule. All, all I know is, is, is anything that's uh, sex wise is for me is more spontaneous. It's always about the moment. Oh, me too. Mm-hmm. I will say that, <laughs> that, uh, when we ever, uh, uh, uh meet in person, Ed, uh, and I don't see you right away. Feel free to come up behind me and just give me a hug, because I'm a touchy feely sort of person too. <laughs> That's Aww. I give you my consent. <laughs> and see, this is where. Uh, yes, I'm actually making a note on something. Sorry for those of you that are like looking visually and like, why is Gary suddenly have a pen? Um, <laughs> So, yeah, like that, but that's where Jeff and I are different because I'm like, don't hug me from behind unless I know you're there. Like, some people uh-huh. have actually, some people have actually learned this in an odd way. Like, <laughs> I say odd, it's an uncomfortable way. Like, they've done it to me. Gary has told the story before. I have? Well, then I guess I don't have to tell it again. And I've got um, the face. Well, I just, like, if it, I have personal boundary space issues like if i don't know something's going to happen i usually don't react positively if anything i shut down and i'm just not a fan of that like that's why you know i prefer consent like you know yeah that's that's why i'm giving prior consent i am i am not a big fan of 
I am not a big fan of I'm I'm kind of on the same boat in some ways with Gary. Like I'd like to see you coming. If that that sounds really bad. But, um, <laughs> sorry. Not that. Not that. <laughs> not that context. Um, I'm meaning uh, like if you're gonna like hug me or you know come and talk to me or something along those lines, I want to like see you like physically before you do anything to me. I'm usually pretty open. I'm usually okay with touching. Um, but like, get, like Gary said, if you're like someone comes up behind me, I'm not a big fan of that because I don't necessarily see you, and that's never good for well, me. I will, I will say this: I want to. I like. I have a a hyper awareness about personal space, mm. um, probably stemming from unresolved mm-hmm. like issues when I was younger about personal safety, and so when something happens unexpectedly and I'm not prepared for it. I don't think it's going to happen. I probably don't take it as a, I tend to be neutral to the negative as opposed to like possibility that it's going to be a positive outcome. That being said, if it's somebody that I know and that I care for, like, and they were to come up behind me and give me a hug, the moment I know who it is, all of that kind of probably goes away. But for the however the length of time is that I don't know that, I'm probably not a fan. Um, mm-hmm. And I've tried hard over the years as I've gotten older to not be an asshole about it. Do you know what I mean? And be like, and yeah. brush it off or whatever, you know, and give somebody a bad reaction. Um, but I know I've done it bad a couple of times in the past because some people have actually come up to me and been like, they they verbalize and they say, I know you're not a fan of, is it okay if I? <laughs> and then I feel mm-hmm. like this big because I'm like, oh, yeah. Now I feel like a jerk. <laughs> well, that's a, it's a, it's a, it's a reminder of a consequence of a past like interaction kind of thing. And it's like, well, that was never my intention to make someone feel bad. And like now apparently I've got these boundary things, but it's like, <laughs> And 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 oh, one way to avoid that sort it's... of situation is instead of saying "I know you're not a fan of," just go into "Can I give you a hug?" There you go. <laughs> you know, s- skip the part of "I know you're not a fan of." First, ask for permission, and usually <laughs> you might get a positive result. Yeah. Well, and to be fair, I think that most of the time that this has happened is is like in a public it's space. Fancy. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, like, you know, if I'm if I'm at home, like if I'm in my yeah. home and there's one other person here with me and someone comes up behind me, I'm going to make a huge presumption. It's the person that's in the space with me, mm-hmm. like, and <laughs> therefore probably will not have that much of an issue about it. However, if I'm in a public space or there's more individuals, then I'm I'm at a, an unawareness. Like, I don't know quite who, what, where, when. In that case, which is really interesting because I know that this has happened a fair amount of times. I've been at bear events, whether it be a potluck, a bar function, uh, you know, and a run or something like that. I even though I'm theoretically in our community and I'm safe, uh, I don't necessarily always quite feel that way. And it's not that I think people have bad intentions. I just. mm -hmm. No, that's a perfectly reasonable response mm. something, something i gotta okay. say one nice therapy. anyways uh <laughs> Ed, let's talk about sex boundaries okay um okay. so sex um which is hi i'm getting my phd in sex um so sex boundaries that's kind of like the when we talk about the checklist this is where this kind of comes in but you know The biggest example that I have as far as sex boundaries is consent, right? Like I did an entire workshop at Drench Fur about consent and how, you know, like it's (laughs) insanely important when it comes to sex. But it can also be your key to having some like pleasurable experiences, right? Like knowing what you want. And be willing Mm -hmm. to act for it, right? Um, Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. um, Oh, go ahead. 
Oh, I'm just gonna say like one of my one of the biggest things when I when I'm playing with someone, I do not like things that are far too broad. To the point like where someone says, like, so what are you into? And they say like anything or whatever, I'm gonna be like, Well, no, because mm-hmm. that's far too broad. And you are setting yourself up to be I mean, just no, like I, the, the, to the extremes of those, I don't, I, the things you don't want to necessarily mentally think about to like it being really, really lame. Cause you didn't really tell me what you wanted. So I try to like get anyone I'm playing with to talk to me about what they want to do or, and I talk about what I want to do because that's going to be a more pleasurable experience. Cause we know where we are what we want and what we can give and take out of that moment in that situation, that, that physical intimacy, physical intimate moment. Um, it's also kind of, you know, a good way to kind of um, discern if you are going to be a match, if you were to get physically intimate, 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 well, intimate. On, intimate. <laughs> on, on another kind of perspective on that whole thing is when they, if somebody says I don't have any, it's probably more of they don't know, or they it's, don't know how to communicate it, or right. or even yeah, even that it's like I've never really experienced anything that reaches any limits yet. So then it's then at that point it's more about trying to be like, okay, this is a great place of let's explore that. And uh, 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 and then following some paths that are within, like that's where you then go back to to okay. So here are my boundaries. So let's go see what's within my boundaries that that hits with yours, and then it can find where those limits are because everybody has those things where you don't know what you don't know, and you know. And there are some things you know you don't know. And wow. if they're saying that they don't have it, it, that they don't have any limits, it's really something that they don't know that they don't know. And then it's just about finding, getting to that realization of either these are things that you didn't realize you didn't know. And now we're we're at a point where you know you don't know them, so let's find out so you can know them. Yeah, like like what's the menu, right? Like like what's on the menu? Like where like where can we go and where, and what's off of the menu? Uh, and because I mean, like Damon, like what, what you talked about with when somebody says anything, I'm like, okay, so do you are you okay with scat? <laughs> right? Like like let's go there. Yeah. And it's like no, why do you mean that? <laughs> well, you you that was that as you when said that was on your menu. List. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, yep. Like, so, like, or I'm just gonna be like, list, like, like, I'm gonna cut you with my knife, and you're gonna bleed out, and then we're all good. Like, I'm gonna get you know pleasure from that. You're okay with that, well, right? You I, said I mean, anything, I mean, right? I mean, it's a, it, it, a more likely way to say, that. okay, hold on, let me bring up this list. Okay, ska? No. Blood? Okay, no. Uh, fire? Maybe. Okay. Maybe. We'll, 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 then we'll not, come back then, to that. Then, <laughs> then it's not anything but but here's the thing like, is like I'm i just, mean I, I, I am i am just... in regards to the silliness of what we're discussing we're being a bit extreme to prove a point but maybe the individual doesn't have the capacity to understand that maybe they are more vanilla than they are hardcore like mm-hmm. that there is a there is a distinct you know mm-hmm. kind of difference between them so yes i agree like asking you know what's on the menu um mm-hmm. That should be a shirt. I'm going to add that to the list. Um, <laughs> that's, that's a good one. <laughs> I, I, I think, and, and part of the part of it, at least for for me, is pretty much most of the sex, if not all of it, the sexual encounters, I should say, that I've I've ever have have always been pretty vanilla. There have been plenty of things that I'm probably interested in. I've just never really gotten together with anybody to really explore anything further. We've talked about this. Um, I mean, just the, the one time that I got tied up, I really like, but I haven't had that happen again. I would like to have that again and get more exploration, but I don't really have anybody to do that with, et cetera, so et cetera, et cetera. Do that this month? <laughs> I'm, I'm too lazy. 
Well, do you have rope? Anyways. What did I miss? Moving on. <laughs> oh my. Can't see my uh, eyebrows waggling. But... Intellectual boundaries. <laughs> So intellectual boundaries, I mean, now we're getting into, uh, like, election season. I mean, you know, this is just the idea of, like, knowing yourself and knowing, um, like, who and, and like, being aware of, like, who and what you're talking about and, like, knowing where your limits when it comes to intellectual topics are before you get to a point where anger is flaring up for you and that it's totally fine to agree to disagree, right? Like, we can walk away. We don't have to get to a point where we're screaming at each other. So knowing that for yourself is really important. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, then sorry, material. Sorry, you're a flat a earther. One. We could not have a relationship. Right. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then material boundaries, uh, you know, uh, be you know like take care of your stuff right like know what your limits are with with your materials um i know for me i don't let money out i i will give you money but mm-hmm. i'm not going to lend you money be, because i've been burned too many times with that um mm-hmm. and you know if you need to 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 have some kind of a system when it comes to your personal items like if if somebody wants to borrow something like, hey, I would like to, um, you know, you can borrow my sling, but uh, I need it back by Friday, okay? Follow-up question using me, oh, what's happening on Friday? <laughs> no, I'm, yeah. I'm, seeing a, I'm seeing a failure in, like, the, in the bringing back part. I think there's an... A presumed expectation of cleanliness and sanitation with said borrowed slings. <laughs> <laughs> For the it's record. like, oh no, 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 it's it's really well, what's happening well, on I, on Saturday night. Friday night, I'm making sure that my damn shit is clean. <laughs> right. I just, I kind of have this theory. If I lend something to you, I expect it to come back in the condition I gave it to you, if not better. It's this warped kind of, you know, thing. You know, okay. the, see, and that's I need the sling back by theory, Friday and it if, needs to be clean. <laughs> well, no, like, here's the thing. Like, if I, like, yeah. let's say, you know, I give something to David to borrow. Like, like, I give him a sweatshirt. I don't expect it to be back in worse condition. Like, I mean, true. Yes. You would that's that's back where I'm coming condition. from on this. So, you know, but, but, you know, if you want, say, it clean. You need to let make sure you know. Like I'm getting like, like I'm gonna use your sweatshirt because I think that's a perfect analogy. Like I'm letting you borrow my sweatshirt for a week or whatever. Then if that's all you say, then if you get it back and it smells or whatever, then you didn't tell me you wanted it clean before I gave it back to you. So well, I borrowed it and I wore it and I wore it every day and I wore it out smoking and everything else. And here you go. Now, me personally, don't lie, you don't smoke if it. I were to, to borrow something like that from you, I know what I would do. I would get it. I would clean it. I would wash it before I gave it back to you because that's kind of the person I am. Well, but right. and, and I was about if, to say, but, like, that's a fair expectation. And I was like, <laughs> perhaps not like that. Not. Some people don't understand, <laughs> like. Like, because for some people, maybe yeah. that's part of their cake. Like, they want stuff to be smelly or whatever. I, however, I'm sure you can hand... borrow my jock. Don't worry about washing it. <laughs> but yeah, now an expectation <laughs> has been communicated. Like, that's the thing. <laughs> Where David and I are, I think, coming from the same place of like, if you're going to borrow like a, a piece of attire, I would expect it to be washed. Like, so that, you know, the condition that I gave it is the condition that it comes back. That's just well, kind of, is, mm-hmm. and this is a great time to talk about how like that expectation can turn into an agreement, right? Like I have an expectation, I have a personal boundary that like I would like you to take care of this and to return it to me in the the form it was given to you. Can you agree to do that? Okay, so we're on the same page. Awesome. 
but boom. Here's my jock strap. <laughs> boom, we're good. <laughs> yes. F. If you want that jock strap to be like to be funked up, by all means, be sure to tell somebody. I'll be happy to take care of that I, for I, you. I just, but I, I, I just keep thinking of. Uh, I just keep thinking about a moo pup. That's all. Yes, oh, exactly. Yeah. Here's here's kind of the way I look at this, and the more I think about it, um, what where where expectations get to be dangerous is because they are personal, and again, it goes back to like we were saying earlier about not communicating that. Like, I think if you put it out there, then it dissolves any mystery. It removes like the the unknown factor, obviously. Um, but again, like it kind of goes back to your question and earlier about like, you know, talking to people and then feeling frustrating about your venting. I'm like, mm, not really. Like, that's why I guess I used Damon in my example of like borrowing like a, an article of attire because I know him well enough over these years and, and his personality that if he was to borrow something that he would take good care of it and be, you know, a good steward of it. And then on top of it, like when I get it back, like if something were to happen, that he would explain and not just like hand it over without explanation about the stain or the burn or whatever is, you know, <laughs> whatever damage has occurred in that case. Um, yeah. So anyways, probably wasn't sitting really on your porch and <laughs> sitting on the porch <laughs> and you get a text. I gave you your sweatshirt back and you pull it out and it looks like shit. <laughs> <laughs> like fuck you. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. So that being said, uh, Ed, let's talk about this checklist. Yeah. You got, okay. you got, a, so, you got a, a reference thing for everybody. It's kind of like homework ish. Yeah, kind of. So like, uh, so this brings us back to the sexual boundaries, but uh, but to to say, so this is a checklist that I use when I work with couples as far as their sexual boundaries go. And the way that I do this is that I have them fill this out separately uh, because again, like these are our personal boundaries, right? They're not, they're not mm -hmm. your boundaries. So the way that it works is you fill out yours. Then we get together and we discuss like your partners and yours. And then we discuss how they overlap or where they don't overlap, right? Um, because if you were to fill this out um, with your partner in mind, then like you're not gonna put some stuff down because you know, oh, well, they wouldn't want me to put that down, right? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. right? Like It's good, like I will tell you that for me, I love making out, like it's my thing, right? I love making out and I love cuddling. Um, Stop my husband's not going to say the same thing, right? Um, and that's okay, right? Like, that is that is fine. So, like, if I'm ever going to play with somebody, I know that, like, <laughs> I want this and I want this because <laughs> I'm, you know, because that, that, that's really, that's a, that is within my boundaries. Um, mm -hmm. So, to go to this checklist, um, so we have... Looks like we have um, different categories. So we have who, who can we, who can we do these things with, and what can we do? Um, the affectionate and sexual activities, mm -hmm. the when of it, and where. And then it goes into like some BDSM uh, roles and specifics, um, which you know mm. that's. If that's not your thing then you don't have to fill those out but um it's important because sometimes uh i work with kink discordant couples and it it's really interesting when like one of the partners is coming back and some of their bdsm stuff is filled out and it's not filled out on the other ones so that's where we get to have these awesome conversations about differences and how my personal boundaries are not your personal boundaries mm -hmm. and that's perfectly okay that what i want and what i feel like i need is not going to be the same what you feel like you want and what you feel like you need so 
Um, so there would be situations like in this, like in your example, somebody has a whole bunch of the BDSM stuff and the other person's just like blank in that part. It may be the one of the aspects of that open relationship, the agreement of the open relationship is that BDSM part of it that the other partner needs that the one partner def doesn't seem to not be able to fill might be one of the reasons for it. And that's where the negotiation comes in as to what's okay and what's not okay. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you can even have kink couples who come in and um, they don't have overlap on some of the activities that they like, right? Like, so like the one thing is I'm like, I want both of you to be happy, right? So like, why are you going to have your partner do something that they don't really want to do? Like, can we find that? Um, can we find that with somebody else? Like, if you're if that you're right your agreement to it, like, you know, that would be that would be desirable. Yeah, we've met. I've seen like I see it online, not online, but I've seen several things where the kink certain things don't match up, and they agree. The couple agrees to seek other partners to fulfill those kink fantasy whatever you know you want to call them so that they can then come home and enjoy their partner without worrying about their partner not their partner not doing what they don't want to do or their partner trying to do something that they don't want to do mm -hmm. but we'll have a link yeah. to this checklist on the website too so just uh, uh find the show and show up her show notes and you'll be able to find a link to this so you can download your own copy yeah um so like as you go through this is there anything that is popping out to you as something that you're like oh i never would have thought of that um it's funny to me because one of the things you mentioned, for example, was like the, the the being affectionate and kind of aspects of things and flirting. Flirting is a big one for me. Um, it's the whole jealousy thing. It's a thing that, you know, so how far can it go? Like, that's usually what I would want to know. Um, I th that's funny how that jumps out. And... Um, Oh, where was it? Where was it? Crap. I just had it. Where did it go? Um, I'm, I'm finding the familiarity aspect of it. There's only stranger listed and unimportant. So if you go to like who on the very first page, it says familiarity and then it says stranger and then it says unimportant. Okay. That's, a, that's kind of a really big like gap because what if I want to be familiar with them, but they're not necessarily just a stranger. I don't know if, if you, if you know what I mean, like, um, I think that like, that just means, do they have to be a stranger? Does it have to just be like a one-time thing or does that matter to you? Mm, okay. 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 So and like some couples acquaintance. don't want repeats. Hmm? Some couples don't want repeats or some people don't want repeats. They just, they, they want a new person every time. Fair. Fair. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Sure. Uh, I, I can kind of see where, where where that can be. Like, there really should be a third option in there. Because it's mean, like, I think stranger or not, essentially, or maybe it's not important. They could either not be a stranger or they could. Not, not be a stranger. We're basically the entire next line. My acquaintance, best, close friend, friend, neighbor, coworker, ex-partner. That that sort of line. 
and the the one after that because all of well, those are all familiar yeah. right and i i think that's the confusion is like what's not understood is like if you don't choose stranger then you would just skip that line and you would go down to the next line oh uh, yeah yeah but like, like mm. I agree. Like I think Damon kind of focusing on it, it's like, mm, like it, it, you don't get any. Like it's very rigid in terms of its like opportunity. I'm personally add like the the list is great. I'm having way too much OCD twitchiness about like the layout that has been established <laughs> this, from like if, if almost ten years ago. Is if, you is making this a better presentation. <laughs> I'm just like, I want to copy paste the shit out of it and fix it because it's driving me crazy. Actually, but... it looks like you got it from, uh, what is it, openingup.net? Yes. Mm-hmm. Credit, so. Which is why I'm not doing anything to it because it's not something, like, it's not its creation or something that, like, it's I someone, would it's someone feel helpful it. tweaking it. Just yeah, my, kind of... my boss would hate this because he hates checklists. Like, he absolutely hates check boxes. He hates them with a passion. We just had this conversation about some of the letters we have at work. And she's like, I don't know. I can't I can't deal with that. I don't like it. So <laughs> she would fucking hate this. I well, that, I, that sounds very personal. I don't know what to say about I that. I mean, it is personal for her. It was so funny. We were in a, it was, sorry, segue sidebar. We were in a meeting talk, talking about letters are being written by our third party administrator. And one of the big things, like, we got to this letter and she looked and there's this whole thing of checklists, like, check boxes. And she's like, nope. First thing I want to do is eliminate that. And she put, like, a comment. She highlighted it and threw a comment over on the side. Like, no. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> the entire comment is, no. I mean, it was more than that, but just, it, <laughs> but, like, that was her big thing. And I was just like, Okay. And she, and then we met with our manager about it and she kind of brought it up again. And I was just like, yeah, I get it. You, you don't like them. You don't like check boxes. Cool. <laughs> so that's a thing. That's the thing. So do you want just a list and people to circle things or? Yeah. What would be, how would, how would you change this? Drop boxes? Are you talking to her? Or are you talking to me? Talking about her? No, or I, Gary? I, yeah, I think we were just talking about how she would want. She uh, was okay. reacting, that's all. She would, she, I mean, yeah. Because here, here's the thing. It's, there's a bunch of these where multiple choices would come in. Um, so, it, so you can't do a drop down because you can only sl- really select one thing in that unless you have multiple fields with drop down and then... But then there's also the drop down for yes, no, uh, or or just leaving it blank. But that would be the same thing as a checklist, anyways. So, eh. but yeah, I I, th- I think in this case for 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 this, and I can kind of understand where Gary's coming from, because you get down to like the BDSM kink activities, and it's really hard to read. That's, yeah, that's that's a lot. <laughs> It's one of those things where I'm along the lines. I'm like, no, see, they need to be justified together. <laughs> so all the categories and then all the OKs to give, it needs to be like in a table. Mm-hmm. Or an invisible yeah, table where it's invisible. just formatted so that they're all lined up. It's a, it's a readability thing on that one for me. But anyways, that's beside the point. Mm-hmm. We're not here to critique okay. checklists. <laughs> right, but like, can you see how this would be helpful, like, for you to fill out just for yourself first, mm-hmm. yeah. without your, without your partner in mind? It, mm-hmm. It's like a, it's it's like a match game. <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, so, it is. Um, so it's just like it's, I just I'm going to use this as a perfect example. When Jim and I were buying this house, um. One of the things our realtor came up with was he wanted each of us to separately write a list of the top 10 things you wanted in a house. And you could go just the things that you wanted. And then the two of you separately came together. You looked at each other's list and you kind of circled maybe the things that you kind of agreed or you found what you agreed on. And that kind of became the list for the 
I used the word compromise, but that's not really it. It kind of became the list of the things that you would, both would want, essentially, in the house that you would get. And that, you know, it was a great idea for us because it literally came, we both kind of had a lot of the things that we wanted in common. There were a few things that we didn't have in common that we talked about and either agreed upon or disagreed upon based on the conversation. That it was a great moment for us because it really made us think about what we personally wanted and then when we came together what we as a couple would want yeah i think it gives you more of an idea of of because think about it separately to begin with helps uh to to it it helps you bring up the things which you have differences because if you're just looking at it just from your perspective and not trying to bounce off the other person, you can truthfully find all the things that you're looking for. And then when you come together, you will then then see now that you got this list, uh, what those differences are that you probably neither of you probably even knew. And if you were talking together, they may just never come up in conversation. Right. Sure. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. <sighs> wow. So, yeah. Ed, I think you wanted to basically kind of do a, a bit of a recap and then let people know about resources. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, recap. And I think that, Gary, one of the, like, future topics we are going to do is, like, communication. Because we've kind of talked about this a lot. That, like... As far as boundaries, rules, agreements, all of these go, like, you, communication is pivotal to all of these. Um, and that, like, there are so many boundaries when it comes to communication. Um, but if you want to discuss boundaries, you have to, well, discuss them. Um you know, like, another thing that's really important to think about is that boundaries are for you. Right. They're they're yours. Right. They're not other people's. So to look at mm -hmm. them like their skin, like they're protecting you um, is a really good way to frame it. Um, and, you know, like we've talked a lot about like how this uh, takes place within a relationship, uh, open relationship context. But like you don't have to be in an open relationship to discuss boundaries uh, like we kind of talked about that, like in monogamous relationships. Sometimes expectations run rampant and that like these are really important. These are really important conversations to have even within monogamous relationships. Mm hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. Wow. Um, and then like, you know, a lot of this information that I'm that I'm drawing upon came from the books that I also referenced whatever, whichever uh, comes out loud it was, um, the first landscape of relationships, but um, opening up by Tristan Terramino, that, that's where that uh, that open relationship checklist comes from. Uh, the book More Than Two is also really good. That, that gets into more like polyamory discussions. Um, Ethical Slut, that's a very like seminal um, book on the, the topic of non-monogamy. Um, if you talk to anybody who's in my field, they're going to shove this book down your throat. Uh, and then another one, <laughs> Damon, you kind of referenced that jealousy can be an issue when we're talking about non-monogamy. Um, and you know, it's really good to like put that on the table that like jealousy may happen. And like when it happens, this is what Damn, we do. Yeah. So I put a um, I put a workbook, a link to a workbook, for for you to to peruse as well. And I'll, I do have mm. to say that ethical slut is probably the number one most recommended book on this show. Because you're not the only one who has mentioned that. In fact, I think oh, no. Mr. Allen on uh, a few times, a long time ago. Uh, he also recommended that book. So. Can you tell this is a good book? It's really good. <laughs> yeah, um, so, I mean, like, like I said last time, it's the it's the book that opened me to the idea of like even having a non monogamous relationship. 
Yeah. Good to check that out. Mm -hmm. Hey, guess what, folks? It's late. But that's not the reason why <laughs> this is also the end. Oh. There's <laughs> plenty of ways to contact us. And also take a look at the... Get a link to the uh, open relationship checklist as well as links to the recommended books that we had here uh, recommended by ed all on our website at comesoutloud.com you can uh comment on a blog or shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com uh, leave us a voicemail with all your questions comments concerns uh or just sexy nothings that you want to whisper in ours and uh, the listeners ears at 361 we'll talk that's 361 265 8255 you can find us on our various social media outlets at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place, the URL. That's Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and, of course, on YouTube. You can join our Entourage chat, um, which has various things popping up in there on, on occasion, at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, if you want to know when we're going to be recording these shows, mostly, this was one of the few days when we had to reschedule slightly a little later, uh, but you can find out all that information at our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You can get various merchandise, possibly some future things that we talked about on the show, as well as things like <laughs> this version one comes out loud logo shirt that I'm wearing. A consent is my foreplay shirt that uh, Damon is wearing. A cap that uh, Gary is wearing. Yeah, all at zazzle.com slash comes out loud and remember zazzle has a um, bunch of different country stores so uk australia germany plenty of other places i can't think of right off the top of my head um at uh zazzle dot your localization here slash comes out loud uh you can also uh become a patron patrons like you um uh, help us do things such as upgrading my computer which uh, recently happened um, at patreon.com slash cubs out loud you can subscribe to us through, and rate us at apple podcast subscribe to us through google play and spotify you can find me anywhere on the internet as box set box puppy box cub box something or other hmm. if you want to get in touch with me you can find me as theater cub 79 on most bear related sites or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on twitter if you would like to uh have a discussion with me about any of this stuff that we've discussed or uh perhaps even more interesting things you know like uh what you would want to do when we get together how stimulating that would be <laughs> you could pretty much find me anywhere online as gamer 73 and ed where would they get in touch with you if they could so you can find me on Facebook under my name, Edward Angelini Cook, or on socials as either Lil Boss, Lil Cubby, Eddie H. Cook on Twitter, um, and then also my Daddy 3 is Triple X Twitter. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. Oh my. We got an echo. Oh my. Oh. <laughs> echo, echo, echo. Oh gosh. That's all right. Well, thank you again, Ed, for being on the show. That was kind of cool. And thank you for a really uh, good conversation. 
Thank you for being so grateful of uh, doing it so late at night. I know it's uh, getting close to midnight no for everyone. So I, I appreciate it. It was a blast. Everybody. It is always a blast to have you in this. Oh, you're so sweet. Or I'm just letting you do what I do. You can do that too. Oh, yeah. it's definitely oh. a flirting thing. <laughs> mm. Nice. Mm. Oh, I'm <laughs> blushing. Yeah, you can see it but us. Oh, here we are. <laughs> mm. It's okay. <laughs>